two seconds. We're just getting the recording started. Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Cynthia Holt, and I am the Executive Director of the Council of Atlantic Academic Libraries. Um, welcome to our webinar today. Um, it's more it's more of a brown bag discussion, uh, document delivery and ILL brown bag discussion. So uh, lots of discussion and uh, questions are encouraged. Uh, just as a few housekeeping things, uh, we are recording this session uh, as we usually do. And uh, this, the recording will be made um, available on the call uh, website uh, as soon as um, as soon as the it is available, and that's usually within the, an hour or so. Um, also, uh, we ask that you mute yourself if you're not speaking, and also to turn your video off if possible, unless you're speaking, because uh, we do have some attendees here uh, from low bandwidth, and so we want to make sure that everybody has an optimal meeting experience. Uh, questions, we will uh, hold questions till uh, the latter part of the uh, discussion, but uh, if you do have a specific question to the topic being discussed at that moment, uh, please go ahead and and ask. Uh, it is a discussion. It's not a it's not a presentation. It is a discussion. So please ask questions throughout. Um, so I would first like to acknowledge that Call CVPA uh, represents member libraries across the region, all of whom sit on the unceded and traditional territories of First Peoples. Uh, in Newfoundland and Labrador, our libraries sit on the homelands of the Inuit and the Nunatsiavut and Nunatukavut and the Innu of Natasinan, uh, the Bealtic and the Mi'kmaq peoples. In Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia, we find our friends and colleagues situated on the territory of the Mi'kmaq. And in New Brunswick, libraries are found on the land of the Wolostokiuk, uh, the Mi'kmaq, and Passamaquoddy peoples. Uh, we at CALL CBPA wish to express our sincerest gratitudes to the first peoples who share their ancestral homelands with us all. Um, I'm now gonna turn over the session to uh, Wendy Witsack, who is the ILL and Copyright, um, excuse me, ILL and Copyright Coordinator at Mount Allison University, and uh, Joe Wickens, who is the manager for document delivery at Dalhousie University. Uh, and they will facilitate the session, the Q&A, and all of the, uh, the topics under discussion. Um, so without further ado, Wendy uh, and uh, Joe, if you could take the, the podium, that would be great. Hello, all. Um, good morning and good evening, or good afternoon and whatever. Um, I apologize, I have my dog here with me and he likes to get all whiny when I'm on the computer working. So if you hear some strange noises, it's probably him. Um, so one of the things that uh, we're showing you today is a wiki that I've created. Um, this is one thing that I've done. I've created documentation, not all my interlibrary loan jobs. And this is something that came out from my Mount Allison job here where I've, um, done basically a how-to for everything uh, Mount House and interlibrary loan related and um, when call resource sharing talked about training and discussion uh, training and documentation I shared my wiki and I've actually gone through and created a generic wiki uh, for just interlibrary loan processes how to do xyz step by step and so I believe the link and the username and password came out for you and it's also just gone in the chat there um, and let me just share my screen. So and by all means, uh, log in and take a look if you'd like as well. Just finding my proper screen. So what I've kind of done is organized it for me and I'm actually just gonna turn off my camera just while I'm showing here. Um, most of this is how exactly how I have my actual um, wiki done for a local interlibrary loan. Um, but I also have stuff like, um, you know, I tried to uh, document the usernames and passwords I use for the various Iliad accounts that we use or when we direct requests from different libraries because we don't have world share here. Um, but also stuff that I need to look up a lot. I have just linked in here so it's easy to find. Uh, like the shipping pool, uh, the shipping uh, tool is always 
easy to find here. And um, I also have stuff like searching and verification tools, uh, just, and I'm always adding what I, what I find new. So if you have any to share, by all means. Um, so some that we go to a lot and broken into by subject. Um, but basically through, through the processing thing, it is step by step. So if you have somebody new, which we actually did have, we had a newcomer come in and uh, I basically said, okay, you're doing receiving loans and you're shipping loans. So follow procedures here. And if you have questions, let me know. And that's what they did. They, they would come to me occasionally for a clarification, but otherwise they were able to follow this step by step. So this version is minus anything MTA specific. I've gone through and I've tried to make things generic. Um, but for example, if someone's coming in and they are just brand new and they're looking at um, uh, doing some borrowing requests or some lending requests, um, they can go step by step. So if you're doing things in the client or if you're doing things in the portal, um, because of course everything's different in both of them, um, and some stuff, because I haven't done it in the client for so long, I don't remember how to do it. So some of it's a guess, but I tried to note where that is. But basically, if you're in the portal and you're going to look at a lending request, you go here, you do this, you click this. Um, things that are shared between steps is in white. There's the green color for the portal, blue, so it's easily color, color coded. It's the same way through the, the entire wiki. And it's all hyperlinked. So if they're looking at doing something here and they need to know how to do that, they can go straight into it. And it's gonna take them into that page onto how to do stuff. And everything has the home link. So I do find this, I mean, I use this quite often, uh, not necessarily this one here, um, but it's fairly easy to update. It's all web-based, it's all WYSIWYG. Um, although that sometimes is not the easiest to use. Does anybody have questions about the wiki? Or anything? Nothing in the chat at this point. Beauty. Um, you all feel you can, I mean, everybody has access, so you can go take a look through it yourself. And if you'd like to see what I've actually got a page here uh, that I've copied over from ours. Um, so if we have a night coming in, it actually goes through and specifically says where to file things, what to do with this, how to check that, how to do this specifically, how we shelve things. So it is step by step for someone to follow and follow our procedures here. And we do use mostly the portal for daily processing. Um, it's not always the easiest option, but sometimes it's just uh, the closest option, so. So is there any uh, any of these things that in particular that uh, anybody would like uh, Wendy to walk through or to explain in a little bit more depth? There is a question. Oh, sorry. There are some questions here in. Could we please see an instruction page open? OK, so we've done that. Um, unless there's more that you'd like to see. That was from Alexandra. Uh, and then Marlon has asked, is there instructions to set up a similar wiki at our own site? And is it possible to copy your wiki and then edit it to make it specifically for our own? Um, that's kind of how I've done things is just copied and pasted it into a new page, to a new wiki. So it is it is a uh, Creative Commons license. Feel free to use and adapt and just keep sharing. Is there an uh, easy way to bring all the content over at once or do you have to do piece by piece? That is a good question for somebody who knows more about this kind of thing. I did it page by page. So when I went into mine, I copied my home page and then I went through and added each of the other pages. And of course, this has also evolved from the time that I did that. But yeah, this, I mean, feel free to use the content, feel free to adapt it. Um, I just, I tried to keep this up to date, although a lot of it was, uh, 
I had to go through the last week trying to clear out some of the uh, Mount Allison specific information. And of course, a lot of it isn't done. So something like searching using the portal, uh, like when we're in requests, we don't use it at Mount A. So I haven't actually even done it. Um, but I can go through and add that stuff when I have it. Uh, some of it's also just compiled from other places, like the, um, I, I've actually brought in like the notify patron and general messages, how to set that up directly from the Relay OCLC site. So it's step by step, go here, do this. So same documentation there. I haven't cleaned it up from, from what they had, um, but we do sometimes refer to it. So it's just easier to get it from our space than to get it from Relay OCLC. Uh, Wendy, there was a couple questions in the chat. Uh, there was one from Marlon who was wondering if somebody wanted to start a wiki, is this something that's open source software? Is it something licensed by your institution? How did you start it and how did you choose, let's see, PB works? Because uh, Alexander was also asking, what is the platform and how do you get started? Um, PB works, I actually just Googled for free wikis. And I picked one that was the easiest to start. So I, I, this one here has an educational and a paid portion. We're in the educational, so not paid. Um, I, I don't know if there's a limit. I currently have four wikis operating on this on my site. Um, so I've actually done one for fulfillment, uh, AMA fulfillment. I've done one for our uh, access services department. I have my interlibrary loan one and I have the uh, no net one. So currently they're all, there's no, I haven't hit, hit any caps yet haven't hit any page caps and there you can lock it down to open to everybody you can lock it down to password you can invite people people can ask to join so it's kind of handy that way so like for example this one here the Novanet one I have locked it down to a username password just because um just to make sure that whoever can access it is somebody I've, I've allowed um my um interlibrary loan specifically is uh, specific people. People have to ask to join because I do have usernames and passwords there. I did open it up to the resource sharing folks so they, they could take a look and uh, I'm sure they don't want to try and order anything from Iliad from the States or anything so I don't have to worry about them finding that username and password but but I do have other usernames and passwords in that one so that's why I don't. It's one place to keep everything. Yeah, and my my original um, documentation was actually um, a Word doc, and I just found that that was, I mean, first of all, you had to know where you're looking, and you had to go back and forth and uh, from the top, top and bottom, and, and it's harder to maintain. So this I find much easier. Any other questions for Wendy? I'm going to stop sharing here. <laughs> OK. Yeah. So thank you, Wendy. Um, that was so, yeah. so if anybody has any future questions or if you could ask later in the in the in the webinar or you can also uh, just contact Wendy directly. Um, next up we have Marlon McCann uh, from Dalhousie who's going to talk about Brightspace. Sorry, I'm muted. My apologies. OK, I'm going to I'm going to log into Brightspace for one moment and then. I'm going to share my screen. It will just take me a second. Are you sharing right now, Marlon? Uh, well, what I was doing was I, I'm I'm just about there. Go, I'm sharing now. What I was doing was logging into Brightspace, and it's 
asking me for approval. It's it's locked down behind our net ID and password at Dow. And then there's a two step verification so that I had to get my phone and authenticate that it was me logging into my Brightspace. So sorry, that took a second. No problem. <laughs> so can you folks see the screen now? Yes, we can. OK, so uh, we have a, a spot here on Brightspace. And Joe, can you define for folks exactly what Sprite, Brightspace is? Oh dear. <laughs> um, Online community? I don't know what else yeah, to call it's, it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a course um, site. Um, people, mostly it's used for, uh, as you see over here, Course Home. Um, it's for uh, 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 faculty to set up courses and course space to host to uh, um, host uh, course materials and uh, provide opportunities for uh, communication within the class and and mm. all kinds of kind of uh, you know those kinds of course related uh, activities so uh, we also use it um, us other non non-teaching faculty uh, non-teaching staff use it as well for uh, things like uh, uh, groups and uh, uh, teens sort of thing so right and document delivery so that yeah that's what it is and i think okay. you can see from the notice there that we're probably going to not be using it for too much longer but anyway for now this is where we are okay so thank you joe i i wondered myself uh, you know it because it's used for online courses uh, how we could use it as well, but we've been given access to it to create sort of like it's not really a course. It's where we keep all of our procedures. And so they made um, a special group for us. I, IT department made a special group called uh, document delivery. And in here, what we did is we set up. Um, different topics in document delivery and within each topic, I would file a certain file on how to do something. So mine is quite old school. Mine is a whole bunch of screenshots and um, explanations, very detailed for each procedure that we do. So for example, if I go under lending for document delivery, I can see uh, we have a summary of how to process all the different types of loan requests that we receive in document delivery. So if I click on that, what I, I did is try to have a, the table contents is this is the summary of all the different uh, types of requests that we deal with and how we fill them. Uh, requests from libraries that are not part of our resource sharing agreement, uh, requests that are part of the resource sharing agreement, we can have a page in request. That's when a, a Dalhousie person wants to pick up a Dal book at a Dal library. Uh, we have requests that go back and forth between our Novanet libraries. And we have requests that we fill between our own call members. And each one of them have their own set of instructions. What you stamp it, how long it's used for, how you fill it. Um, and because we had so many different types of loans, we sort of had to summarize it. And so this is what I did for each each topic in lending. And the next one is how you print your pick slips because it's different now on the staff portal. So this is still under lending, so I click on how you print your pick slips. And these are the instructions. This the table contents is at the beginning and then it follows with the instructions and uh, it's screenshot step by step. You go into the portal and you click on supplying, then you click on distribution, and then you click on your own library and print your pick slips. And then you click here and then you get a display and then you save it or download it. And you know what I mean? So it's every single step. That's the way I like in instructions for myself so I can remember. But um, it's not efficient and it takes a long time. Like if when they go out of date, takes a long time to update. But if you're brand new to document delivery and you need screenshots, it's helpful. Um, let's see, for example, how we convert a page and request to an Alma request. 
So how we take a regular relay request and turn it into an Alma request and fill it within Novanet. So, so one topic is lending, so I'll go back over here. And then we have all of our borrowing files. Uh, for example, how we print our, our long book bands. Now, we, we don't use cover sheets now. We print book bands. And I'll show you what they look like. We had a relay configure them, so the request number is in automatically. We don't have to write it on our book band. The pa patron's name, the due date relay puts it in for us, the author and title. All of this is written in for us, even a scannable barcode on our, our, our book bands. And all we really have to fill out is the date that we notify our patron. And then we wrap it around the book when it comes in for our patron. And we, we like it that it's scannable, so it's easy to look up and relay, and there's a lot less human error because writing all these request numbers down, sometimes it can be easy to reverse numbers. So th this particular set of instructions is, is how you print the book bands. And we got Relay to set this up for us, so it's, it's done from the portal. So it's under requesting, which is known as borrowing. And uh, when, our, when our cover sheets that are now book bands are ready, they ju we just click on delivery local and print them and they print out. So that, that that's what this uh, Brightspace is. It's detailed instructions step by step for each thing that we do. And, and it's very specific to call and to Dalhousie and how we process a distance education request and how that relates to relay and how we fill it in Alma and so on. How we do statuses for um, requests that we send to Canadian libraries or to other call libraries. Oh, I spelled that wrong. It's C-A-A-L. Oops. Um, how we do our, our patron overdues. Step by step, let's have a look at this guy. So we had Relay create some predefined queries for us. And uh, Relay will tell us or think maybe this is all right. Maybe everyone has these first, second, and third overdue. And so it's just listed on the portal and you click on it. It pulls up the list or we can go through the re-portal. We had, we had Relay create us a report of number of days overdue or a certain, uh, sorry, yeah, overdue borrowing. And it would create uh, requests for uh, a list of requests that are overdue, letting us know which overdue that has been sent on that item. Anyway, so the the way we keep it organized is by topic on the left. So we have all these folders on the left, and then over on the right are the individual files for each uh, process within that folder. So I guess I'll just stop there for a second and see if there's any questions in the chat. Uh, I don't uh, see any in the chat. Anybody have any no questions, questions verbally? Nope. Oh, no. so uh, Alexander had a question. What is the Canada wide resource sharing agreement? I can speak to that. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so Copal, Ocal, BCI and Call uh, CBPA uh, are all part of what we call the resource sharing agreement across Canada. And basically what that means is that we don't charge each other for uh, returnables and non-returnables. Um, so that means that there's no charge for ILL and document delivery between institutions in Canada. Now, there is a caveat that it's not every institution, that it's only the ones that are members of those four consortia, uh, with the exception of uh, the University of Toronto, which opted out of the agreement. Um, but I just put the link in the chat um, if you want to take a look at it. But the important part is uh, it does tell you in there, um, th it describes it. So returnables is basically usually by Canada Post, uh, but it basically says there's no charges. And in the appendices is where you'll find a list with their library codes or ILL symbols. Um, that says who specifically participates in that. And if you receive, if you are a participant of this resource sharing agreement and you receive a request from an, another participant who's in 
under this agreement, you're not supposed to charge them. So you could set it up in your system that anybody who has those codes, uh, you don't charge for. Uh, so uh, that's what the resource sharing agreement is. Uh, COPAL affiliate members, that's a good question. I, um, I'm i not sure if anybody from COPAL on this, this discussion can indicate whether they, they, I don't think they include the affiliate members because affiliate members are usually just for the e-resource licensing part of COPAL. It's not usually for the, the document delivery side. Uh, and it would have to be, you would have to be listed in the appendices uh, because that's the official list uh, of institutions. And the we one other thing, sorry, sorry, go, go, ahead. Go, right, go ahead. I was just going to say there's a couple of questions in the chat about the book bands. One, is there a special printer for the book bands? And two, can you share your instructions on how to create the book bands? Sure. And we just use one of our regular printers and we print our book bands on legal size paper in that printer. And we just have it set up so um, we know where to send the, the print job each time. And it goes to that one printer. It's just a regular printer, but legal size. And I can certainly share those instructions. Perhaps I'll send them, send them to Cynthia and she can send them out. But uh, we had to get sure. Relay to configure how to set it up. We couldn't configure it. Relay configured it for us. And they helped me uh, configure what the book band looks like for Dow. And uh, then they help us set it up. And so instead of clicking on a delivery local printer icon from the Windows client version of Relay, we just click on a button right on the staff portal to print off our book bands. And I just wanted to show you one thing that we do at Dalhousie. Uh, we have four full-time uh, document delivery staff members at Dow. They have uh, do, do a few duties in other departments, but it's mostly in document delivery. And so what we did is we created a list of everything that everyone does, all, all of the duties, and then we would list who does what in this rotation. So every three or four months we switch. So for four months, Kelly was responsible for the routing verification queue and Claire was responsible for the off-campus borer requests. And uh, Kelly was responsible for the distance education requests and so on. So, and so we would, uh, we split it up. So each, each person had one or two queues to look at and we had shifts in our manual search queue so that um, the requests were always being looked at by someone so they wouldn't sit there all day. Uh, then we had our lending duties. Um, all those, uh, mostly just one person did the lending. Uh, we had uh, over here, for example, on our statuses. Where is that? Statuses, we divided up our statuses so we knew any requests that are sent to an American library, Claire would look at those for four months. Anything that was sent to a rapid ILL library, Kelly would look at and so on. And so that's, if you see references to rotations, that's what it is. And every three or four months we switch. So it's always like um, keeping it fresh and everyone keeps up to date on all the different procedures because there's a lot of detail uh, to all of these document delivery uh, relay steps. So I guess that's, that's what I wanted to show you for that. And it is behind a, uh, our net ID and password, which I can't share. Uh, that's how that's how we use our Brightspace, but I can certainly uh, send the individual instructions if anyone has uh, a topic that they're interested in, although I certainly don't have everything written at all. And some of it's out of date because we've been using it for several years, but yeah, I just keep working on it. And this idea was uh, the whole idea of putting it on Brightspace was from one of our staff members, uh, Claire Chung. She's taking her MLIS part time and she was because uh, the, the students use it. I didn't really have anything to do with Brightspace, but as a student, she was using it and uh, it just occurred to her how much easier it would be to find the information we need and update the information we need 
if we could put it on Brightspace in small chunks. Because before, when I wrote the instructions, I would have one file for each rotation, and that PDF, that Word document was over 100 pages, and it was terrible to update. If I hit return at the wrong spot, it would put in like 500 automatic bullets, and then I'd spend an hour trying to get rid of all these bullets. So it was it was way too hard to maintain. So uh, breaking it down to tiny little topics, little chunks, um, I found much e easier to manage. Anyway, that, that's what I wanted to show you. Joe, did you have anything you wanted to add about that? Um, no, just to, just to reiterate, yeah, the, how useful this is, um, especially in the the um, the way that we have things with the rotating duties, um, because I mean, people people are always looking to refresh their knowledge about uh, processes, and and this is the place where um, you can get that information. Um, uh, downside, of course, is as Mar Marlon's mentioned a couple of times, is uh, it's a lot of work to to maintain. Um, so, so yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a difficult, um, it's a difficult thing to do anyway, to kind of keep instructions, keep information up to date and also to provide a, a, a place where people can find it easily. But I think this works pretty well. And I think Marlon, I, I, there, it's also possible each, each, of course, each person logs in to this, to their own version of this and they can, That's right. they can bookmark things and, and prioritize things in their own their own way. So um, so that's yes, good too you, because that's that right. way they bookmark and then you can find it easily. Yeah. yeah. So when you change rotations, you can bookmark things that you need for that rotation and have those right. at the ready. So yeah. so it does work. It does work well. OK, so I'll stop sharing. I just want to that's what I wanted to um, display. Thank you. Thank you, Marlon. Uh, next up we have Joe Wickens and he has uh, something to clarify <laughs> around the web. <laughs> yeah, I should have said this at the top, sorry, um, but I was, I don't know, napping or something. I missed my chance anyway, but uh, yeah. Um, this item we had when we first saw this, we thought, oh, that's odd, WebQ. Uh, and and thinking in the context of call, uh, the WebQ is is like the web uh, where we send things that uh, that can't be can't be processed or can't be sent out through relay. Um, and we thought that was a pretty mundane thing to want to know about. But then it occurred to us that perhaps one of the Copal or or one of the people outside of call had had suggested this. And by WebQ, they meant um, basically the portal and the processing processing through the uh, patron request queue, and and I think that's what it is. So uh, sorry, um, we we can't. I don't use it enough, and I don't know if anyone in 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 call uses that particular feature enough to uh, be able to. Um, present on it. So I I think unless there is somebody that actually wants to see about, you know, or wants to know about the web queue as it is in call, that area where things are requests are the requests that can't be sent out through relay that are sent out through another service like Docline, um, where those requests sit until they can be processed. Unless there's somebody who wants to know about that in particular, I think we'll probably just skip this item. And uh, again, I apologize for the confusion. Thank you, Joe. Um, there was also uh, the question uh, Marlon was going to address around labels, but I wasn't sure if that uh, now that we're not doing WebQ, if that also applies to labels or whether Marlon, you'll still be uh, talking about labels. Oh, you're muted, Sorry. Marlon. There I'm muted. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I can Sorry, uh, quickly show you, <laughs> show you about labels if you like. Um, I'll just share the screen for another minute. And I'm going to log into our Relay staff portal. So over here we have this new button that came out not too long ago called Manage Labels. And we just started using this and I'll show you uh, the different labels we've created. You can color code them. Uh, so 
if we requested a resend on something, we'll tag it with a resend label so it helps us find it. If we have anything that's rush, uh, we will tag that so it helps us um, uh, go back and find it really quickly quickly when we're looking at our statuses. And um, if something is shipped, we'll tag it shipped. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. If we go over here to our, we had a relay create some predefined queries for us, and we split up all the different types of statuses that we try to keep track of. So for example, here's all our patron or PDA requests that we've sent to Canadian libraries. So if I click on that, Here it comes. So we have 36 requests sitting at Canadian libraries right now. And scroll, whoops, move that over there. And let's say here's an example of one. And if I wanted to keep track of this, let's say this was a rush, I could put the rush label on it and update. And as I'm going through my, now that labels are displaying, and now I can see it's got a rush tag. If I, let's see, I close that again. It, it appears here. So as I'm scrolling through my, all the li the requests that are at Canadian Library, I can see right away which ones are rush. And it helps me find them more quickly. And if some of these were shipped, uh, it would show up as shipped and then I would know I wouldn't have to go send a general message asking for the status of the request, unless of course they shipped it three weeks ago and it still hasn't arrived. But you can make any label you want, um, whatever suits you, and it just helps you tag your requests. Um, we use them just for statuses, but I, I suppose you could also tag them with people's names. You know, I'm working on this one if, if I really need it, other folks to know to leave it for me. I could make a tag named Marilyn and I could just um, put it on there so folks would skip over it. But I was just curious. We, we just started using these labels and I was just curious if anyone else is using the label function on the staff portal. We're using them at Acadia. <clears throat> Because we still send requests to at web when I order them from OCLC, we actually just leave them in the queue in the search queue and tag them with or label them as as at web so that we know where they are when we're quickly right. looking. Right. That's a great idea. Uh, so Kit. In the chat, Kit Stone said she's been using it to track uh, requests that have transferred from Rapido Rapid ILL to Relay. That's okay. a mun. And Stephen McIntosh says he's uh, they're using it a little. Stephen, do you feel like you want to share how you're using them? Mainly just for like distant students that we know we're going to be shipping them like all the way to BC and places like that. Right. And I think uh, just ones like where we're waiting for people to get back to us instead of sending it to the patient query queue. Mm. Um, I don't know much about labels. Uh, is it possible to like search by labels, like group them together? Does uh, does that first screen that you showed, Marilyn, if you clicked on that number, would it just bring them all up? Well, let's see. Look what happened to my relay. Uh, you're not sharing it. anymore, so we can't actually see it. Thank you. I'll just share this button. Oops, share. There we go. Let's take a look here. Uh, let's try OCLC statuses. Sh 
shipped, shipped. Okay, so we've got a couple that are shipped. Let's say I'll I'll, uh, I'll change this label to shipped just for a moment. Update, and it's not together with the other one. So manage labels. If you use the search function, you can get them to come up with shipped. Oh, how do you do that, Stephen? It should be just up in the right corner below export requests. Oh, look at that. I also click on the manage labels under admin and it brings up a list of how many you have at which using which label. Uh, oh, yeah, that's that's the one I was. And if you click on that number, will it bring them all up? Like the number? Of yes, it does. yes, it okay. does. Uh, OK, OK, so there's a couple of ways you can do this. Excellent. Look to change the Hold it now. No, if you if you click on oh, the, the 53. Request, yeah, the count. Yeah. Oh, See that's that. handy. There you go. Yes, yes. Yep. Excellent. And we've learned something new already. Hmm. So any other questions for Marlon on that? Oh, and one hey, other thing, Marlon. Much. Oh, sorry, well, um, Marlon, and did, did you do create your own? You can just yes. create as many labels as you want, right? That's right. OK, under manage Good. labels, you can create them. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Marlon. And thank you, Joe, uh, for asking that question, because we just learned a few more things by asking that question. So uh, so the next thing that we had was uh, world share. Now, there were some questions around because uh, when everybody registered, we you had the opportunity to say what things you might want to get out of the session. And um, so there were some in, there were at least three questions around world share. Now, there's it, there was so we weren't quite sure exactly what was meant by a few of them, but uh, one that we will be having a future session uh, where we'll bring in somebody to talk about world share and relay specifically. But there was also a question around was it just setting up, getting an account set up with world share? Uh, because there were three different questions, and one of them was a more general question. Um, so I'm not sure uh, if anybody had a, a specific world share question that they might want to put out there. Uh, but otherwise, we will be having a, a world share focused session. And if anyone is just looking for basic information on how to get a world share account, um, because we're in the process of trying to get that, um, we just contacted our OCLC person um, who I think is named Andy or Andrew. Um, and they just basically said, this is the information we need from you in order to get you a price. And so they they need to have like the uh, full-time enrollment, the total collection size, the number of interlibrary loan requests for the lending, and then they can get you a price uh, for subscription. And uh, IFM is included in that price. And what he also indicated was that, you know, if we are basing our requests and collection on this size, and then all of a sudden we're tripling our requests or we've gone right down to none, the price doesn't change. It's set on that original one and will fluctuate with uh, inflation or whatever, but not based on the number of requests each year. Thank you, Wendy. Um, so yes, as I said, we will be having a more in-depth discussion around world share at a later session uh, where we'll bring in some of the experts to talk, uh, to speak to that, uh, especially uh, in regards to world share interaction with Relay. Uh, so now this is the, yeah, the part of the brown bag where we actually open it up to other topics of discussion or expand expansions on previous topics. Um, we uh, we all hope you've brought some questions um, or some things you want to share. That's the other thing. It's not just about questions. It's also about, hey, I've got this really cool thing that we do at our institution and I want to share it with you. Um, so the floor is open. You can either put things in the chat uh, or you can unmute yourself and ask the question verbally or share whatever.
crickets. <laughs> so some of you must be doing some really cool stuff or doing something that really helped you save some time in your in your processes or or things of that nature. And we would love to have a discussion around that or hear about them. Uh, and one thing I'll also add is that if there's things that you think might work better, ask Relay because there's lots of stuff they're like, oh yeah, we can totally do that. You know, other people are doing this already, but we don't know about them. Uh, one of the things that I learned when I first started here was that we could print things from the portal instead of having to run delivery or um, print requests from the um, the folders, the shortcuts, um, which meant it would actually open in a browser and I can pick and choose which pages I actually wanted to print as opposed to having to print everything or even going manually question or request by request. So that kind of thing was something I hadn't known about and now I want to have it on my delivery local queues and everything else. Thanks, Wendy. Um, is that something you might, is that something people would like to, Wendy, to potentially show them? I'm not sure if that's a, something you can show, Wendy. Let me look. <laughs> In the meantime, anybody else have any nuggets of that nature or of any type of nature? It doesn't have to be specific to Relay or whatever. It could be general, more general around your, your ILL and document delivery staffing, processes, procedures, uh, questions around what are other people doing. This is your chance to, to ask. Okay, while we're waiting for that for you, Wendy, I do see that we have 24 people on the call, and I'm not sure that everybody knows everybody, uh, because we have members here from Call and we have members from Copal, and you may have seen names in the ether, but you may not have ever met each other. Um, so I think this might be a good opportunity for us to go around the room and introduce yourself to the group, uh, so that we all have a, and you could turn on your video at that time so that we all have a face to go with your name. Um, so before we start that though, Kit did have a question if anybody else was using Rapido, or Rapido and Rapid ILL. Um, I th I'm pretty sure there's some folks using Rapid ILL, but I'm not sure about Rapido. And Alma. Uh, we are um, at Dell. We're using uh, both Rapid, well, Rapid ILL and Alma. UNB uses Rapid. Are either of you um, using the features to transfer requests to your pick from shelf? Uh, yeah, yeah. The Alma, yeah, the Alma transfer from. Well, from Alma to Rapid, yeah. And it works. I'm. I, it's kind of mysterious to me how it works. <laughs> Excuse me, but because um, sometimes it does go uh, like automatically. It'll go right from Alma into Rapid and other. But other times it won't. So we have to transfer it to Relay and then to to Rapid. So that um, yeah, to Rapid. So that's a little a little awkward. But yeah, it's it's very good, very slick. I find that um, even like when I get rapid ILL requests for book chapters, um, creating the digitization request so that the book actually ends up on my pick from shelf list in Alma so that I don't have to like do multiple lists to pick books from the stacks. Yeah, we don't do the digitization through Alma yet, so so we don't. Oh, okay. uh, we It has to be you know, electronic basically to fill, but we can of course fill when the when the article comes in through rapid, we can we can fill those, but we are, we're not doing any lending or anything through through Alma. Oh, OK. Yeah, so the Nova maybe, Scotia maybe Nova Scotia institutions are just have just implemented Alma, so there's they're probably not everything's in use yet that they could. Baby steps, we're all on a learning curve. <laughs> mm -hmm. no, it's true. 
OK, um, so let's go. Well, uh, so quick question. Uh, so I'm just looking at the list. Wilma, if you want to start in the, with the introductions, just let folks know who you are. Open, turn on your camera. It's oh, there it is. It is working. Uh, I'm Will McCurdy. I'm the coordinator of interlibrary loans and document delivery at Acadia. And Amanda Sparks. Uh, just one second. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking. My very apologies. <laughs> I, I no. <laughs> I actually moved my camera, um, but uh, my name is Amanda Sparks. I'm actually Access Services Manager at the uh, Killam Library. Joe and Marlon are the experts in document delivery, and I just wanted to learn some things, and I have, and I've already sent an email to Wendy. Nice to see everyone, and hi, Jay. <laughs> uh, thank you, Amanda, and Bridges. Uh, hi, I'm sorry, I don't have a camera. Um, I am the document delivery coordinator at UNB. Thanks, Anne. Uh, Chris at UPEI. No mic or camera. Chris, Chris is anonymous today. <laughs> uh, Denise Savoy. Uh, one moment. There you go. <laughs> Denise Savoy. Uh, I work at University of Moncton uh, for the uh, ILL and uh, the loan department. Excellent. Thank you, Denise. And Yuda Moncton is moving from Relay to Tapasa. So uh, if anybody out there is using Tapasa, <laughs> You'd end maybe to reaching out to you or um, or joining your community. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Guess we are. <laughs> Don't know when, but you know, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Denise. Eva uh, Rivet. <laughs> You're muted. Oh, Eva, can you hear us? You're muted. Of course, there I you go. Somebody had to do that at least once. Um, <laughs> So, hi, I'm at uh, McEwen University out in Edmonton, and uh, we're actually thinking of switching library platforms and uh, moving on to a new system. So I've been, I'm interested in, in all things uh, from, from various systems perspective, and uh, I found your demonstrations and how you do things and uh, the discussion and questions just useful um, in, in some things that we can adopt and certainly consider as we're um, trying to switch our own document delivery, ILL, and, and then, of course, the larger library system. So thank you, everyone, for your insights and your input. Thank you, Eva. Uh, Alexandra Hook. Hi, thank you. Uh, sorry for all my questions today, but this is very exciting for me. Um, I'm in Fort Smith, Northwest Territories, and Aurora College is a multi-campus uh, um, college across the NWT. Ours is the most southern campus, also in Yellowknife and Inuvik, and community learning centers, many scattered all over the NWT. Um, I received the notice of this meeting from uh, the Copal um, Vivian at, at at Copal who, sh who shares lots of these things out. And um, when I had heard that maybe we would have um, ILL fees waived as Copal members, I thought I would hop in and, and hear that. So even if we aren't, this has been very uh, helpful. Thank you very much. We're very, uh, we're small. We do a little bit of everything, just a tiny little bit of interlibrary loan, but um, that's where I started in the library world. It was in an uh, ILL department and it's always been my very favorite so I just love this conversation thank you <laughs> thank you Alexandra and welcome to the ILL Dockdale community again uh, especially uh, across the country Copal and Call uh, do a lot together uh, because we uh, we have a memorandum of understanding so we try to do a lot of knowledge exchange uh, opportunities so there will be more <laughs> thank you 
And there were uh, there's some people posting answers to some questions for you there, Alexandra, in the chat. Uh, Jason Lee. Can you see me? Yep. Hi, this is Jason Lee from Cape Breath University. I'm a collections and resource librarian. Um, I'm not. I used to doing like ILL. Uh, at Dell, but since I moved to CBU, I'm not doing ILL anymore, but I was just trying to be keep in the loop. So with my yeah, the other staff members. So nice to see you. Nice to see you again, Jason. Um, Joanne V. Oh, no mic or camera, but uh, Joanne is for ver is ILL. Uh, I totally missed it. I'd have to go over to the chat. <laughs> University of Cal Mount Royal University in Calgary. Thank you, Joanne. I just want to make sure I don't miss anybody. Uh, let's see, Lisa Warner. Hi, Lisa Warner from the University of Regina. I'm the manager of technical services, which includes uh, interlibrary loan. Nice to meet you, Lisa. Uh, Mark Lattice. OK, I um, uh, don't have a camera. I'm, a, I, I'm based in Mount St. Vincent University in uh, Halifax. I'm one of the two document delivery staff. Well, and thanks, Mark. Uh, Norman McLeod. Uh, hello. Um, yes, I'm Norm McLeod. I work at Royal Roads University in Greater Victoria, BC. Um, yeah, I'm the only ILL staff here with like one backup for when I'm away. Oh, wow. That's a tough one. I'm sure there's some folks on the call who can, who can, uh, who have been in your shoes or are in mm -hmm. your shoes at this time. Yeah. Uh, Patricia Chalmers. Hi, no camera here. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm Patricia Chalmers. I'm assistant librarian at the University of King's College in Halifax. We're a small, primarily undergraduate university, so interlibrary loan isn't um, heavily in demand. Uh, it's one of, we all share a number of different responsibilities, so this is part of my job doing interlibrary loan. And um, I am in awe of how much others are able to accomplish when they are so much busier, but I envy Marlon's work and accomplishments in documenting what she does. Well done. <laughs> and, and, and the and nice I, thing I, is. Here, here. And, and other people's yep. contributions too, of course, but Marlon's was particularly. Well, the nice thing is now that you know about them, you can always ask to borrow them or to, <laughs> <laughs> to adapt them under her creative comments. Yeah. Uh, Sean McCready. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm with. Uh, I'm also with McEwen University in Edmonton. Uh, we've been kind of out of the interoperable loan game for a few years, so I'm just slowly catching up. Excellent. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Sharon Shad. Um, hello. Can you see me and hear me? Yes, we can. <laughs> OK, I'm Shireen. I'm from uh, SFU Interlibrary Loan. I'm supervisor here. And we use Relay and OCLC for uh, ILL, and we have Alma for the library as a li library database. Okay. Know that um, a lot of work. There's a lot of Alma now on the East Coast, so uh, I'm sure there you may be getting some contacts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for the information for today. You're quite welcome. Uh, and then I think we have a few more folks. Stephen McIntosh. Hi, I'm Stephen McIntosh. Uh, I don't have a camera either. Uh, I work at Mount St. Vincent University uh, with Mark Leas at just doing document delivery and desk work. It's always nice to hear more people and try to learn more every time because I always feel like I need to know more. Thank <laughs> <you>. <laughs> hey, Steve. Um, Kit Stone. Oh, I'm here. Yep. Sorry. Um, hi, I'm Kit. I am the document delivery staff member at the Grenfell campus for Memorial University. We use 
rapid rapid uh, rapid ILL relay Alma and Primo. Wow, you guys are a lot of systems. Yeah, uh, yeah, but it 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 all works together somehow magically. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you all very much. I, I, I hope I didn't miss anybody. I think I got everybody. I, I assume since our speakers had already spoken um, that that they were already uh, known when they spoke. Um, so uh, I want to thank you all. And just a heads up, we will be having future brown bags um, around topics. And so please, if you have any particular suggestions, just send them on to me and uh, and we can work on getting those arranged. Uh, uh, we do know that we will be looking specifically at one about world share uh, with relay. Um, so uh, that one will be in the very near future. Um, thank you all for coming and have yeah. a wonderful day. I, I do actually have one request sitting in the printable queue. So if somebody actually wants to see the print request. Oh yes, Wendy, I forgot that. Yes, please show us. Give me a second while I pop back to that screen. So in our, I mean, we only have the one right now because I haven't actually worked on anything. Um, but when we're, when we send it to the to print request, it goes here and we have a little link at the top. It says print request in queue and it'll open in a separate tab with a summary sheet and I can just print this sheet if I want to. So I can just go through, if I have a whole bunch of them, I can just send them all here and then select the ones I need to print because I don't print my copy requests. I just print my loans. So super handy. Excellent. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, so I think that brings us to the end of our session. I'm going to stop recording now.